Okay, so anyways, it's very simple things, so we can, I can do it orally. Uh, and we, we already saw some slides from the colleagues, uh, the previous speakers. So yeah, actually we started 2013 to set up the 5G PPP. Um, quite early days, it was the first big program and it's turned out actually the biggest program worldwide um, that we have and a lot of discussions have taken place um, then in Europe, uh, of course in a global context, so that was of course very helpful in view of standardization, in view of developing first use cases and so on. So uh, why did we start so early? We, all, we saw um, the 5G opportunities um, going beyond what I described this morning as the core business of the mobile industry, which is mobile broadband, uh, mobile data services, which will of course remain very important, but the big growth opportunity in the area of verticals. So there, some studies say like around 5% growth potential uh, only for uh, operator addressable revenues, which is of course quite attractive. So um, this then um, also links to societal challenges. So we see uh, opportunities in the area of transport, health, energy, logistics, um, media, uh, name it. And there was a brochure done by the colleagues of 5G PPP that uh, giving some, some insights of the different uh, use cases in these areas. So that was the origin, and then we came up in 2016 with a, a 5G action plan, looking more into the adoption of 5G, so the, the deployment uh, of 5G technologies uh, to make sure that uh, in 4G we were a bit late when it started. Now it works rather well, we, most of us use it now, but uh, compared to the US and Asia, we were a bit late, in, in also in terms of handsets coming to the markets, and um, so we saw a need really in 5G to, to do this differently. Um, so we, we tried a coordinated approach. We adopted in 2016 the 5G action plan where we defined targets that I mentioned this morning. Um, so having a commercial launch 2020 uh, and then um, towards 2025 to uh, reach a comprehensive deployment uh, of 5G in Europe. All cities covered basically and all transport paths covered. And uh, we suggested in a number of actions in this action plan in the area of spectrum, in the area of um, the deployment of small cells, uh, 5G innovation, to have a coordinated approach among the member states um, to have a, yeah, to create actually this scale that we need in, in, in the mobile uh, ecosystems. Um, of course, one point is of course spectrum. Some of you might have followed the, also the, uh, the assignment procedure in Italy. Um, so we have a deadline now in European law that in 2020 basically the pioneer bands have to be available for, uh, for 5G in Europe. Um, and Italy was quite fast in, in assigning it. Some member states now also moving. We see in, in Germany and France a lot of debates, uh, auctions scheduled for next year, and uh, Finland already uh, done and uh, other countries following suit. Uh, this of course becomes now urgent. Uh, th that we really have at European scale these bands available and also in a setup that can really allow 5G services because you could say, okay, 3.5 gigahertz, we already have licenses in some countries and in, in, in most countries, but uh, we need, of course, um, the, um, the, the um, setup to allow for 5G services uh, to, uh, to be deployed. So defragmentation is the key and, and having uh, sufficient sizes here of blocks. Um, what is then interesting, of course, we have this action plan. We are following the, this very closely. Uh, as mentioned um, uh, by Maurizio, we have the uh, European 5G Observatory that has been launched. You can have a look, 5gobservatory.eu, where you see actually from the public side, so where are we in the preparation? national 5G strategies, uh, spectrum assignments, so is other framework conditions in place in the different countries. That's the first thing that is monitored, and then we have the, um, um, the uh, private uh, side, of course, to see uh, the trials that were mentioned here, so we give an overview of all the trials happening, 5G cities, um, deployment plans, so announcement for investments, so these things are, uh, are reported on this uh, portal. And we also have every three months a report coming out giving an executive summary assessment of where we stand in Europe uh, compared also to, to, of course, global developments. So where do we stand here? We um, are now 
uh, at around 114 big trials uh, that have real market impacts as we see it um, in, in many member states, uh, 25G pilot cities. Um, we have also digital, 10 digital cross-border corridors. So the very important st strategic use case is connected autumn and mobility. And some of you might have seen, we recently launched the first three projects on these corridors that have been agreed among member states to, uh, to advance deployment for trials at, at cross-border areas and then uh, leading to uh, hopefully deployment of these um, transport paths. That is one of the targets of the action plan, as I mentioned before. Um, so we have now 10 of these corridors that have been agreed. One of them is um, uh, managed actually by, by uh, Italian um, uh, institution, the uh, Bruno Kessler Foundation, um, and it's the corridor of, uh, from Munich to Bologna, so uh, the Brenner paths. Um, so this is one of the, the big projects that has been launched. Uh, other two projects are looking at the metz merzig luxembourg corridor, and uh, w one project is looking at a number of corridors, uh, especially Portugal and Spain. So there are a number of corridors that are now filled with life through these projects. We are, of course, expecting in the next phases further opportunities uh, to uh, also address other corridors or additional use cases. Um, so yeah, so this is actually a strategic use case and, in, and also a bit special because there, is a, um, uh, there are typical cases of market failure when you look at deploying this un uninterrupted coverage along the highways. Yeah, if you would ask an operator and probably the colleagues also from the suppliers would say, where, where are the first areas to go? You would probably say we go to the cities. Huh? We have smart cities. We, we offer mobile broadband in cities. We might also think about connecting households with 5G in a specific use case. But uh, no one will tell you, okay, we will deploy all the highways in Europe uninterrupted. Huh? So, of course, this is a strategic business case. Uh, everyone looks at it. But uh, to have this uninterrupted coverage and to have this also at European scale, so cross border, we believe there is a case also for public contributions, for facilitation from the public side. And um, in that sense, I invite you to look a bit further in the next EU budget phase, where we will uh, we propose the so-called connect Connecting Europe facility, a dedicated program um, of, let's say, between one and three billion, dedicated to 5G deployment across these corridors. So this is going beyond the trials. It's really deployment which remains, of course, a private agenda. So we don't say we want to pay the 5G networks from the public uh, funds. Uh, but we, we think there is market failure and we have the public interest dimension where we can uh, also then have this, this partnership approach, public-private, but all the different players from the verticals involved uh, to, to make this happen. So this one is, is to be watched and probably we will see uh, something in the future of the partnership, we see how it evolves also in this deployment side and also a role for this, for this partnership. Um, yeah, and then of course also for your information, there's uh, current discussions on the follow-up of the Horizon 2020 program. So what was just presented was the third phase that is now going in the final years. And then from 2021, we will have a new pr uh, program called Horizon Europe. Uh, where also, of course, we have uh, in, in the area of 5G and smart networks, there will be opportunities, and this is uh, currently to be discussed with the Council and the Parliament, so this is also to be followed, and the first work, work programs will appear then 2020, 2021. 